Okay, this is a continuation of the uh, video I made uh, 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 making the charge that uh, the uh, Challenger uh, disaster June 28th, 1986 was actually murder. Uh, and, uh, and just previously I, I was praising Roger Beaujolais of More Than Thiokol for trying to prevent the launch in cold, extremely cold weather with icicles on the rocket. Uh, and um, he tried to, because of the O-ring would not seat properly and it would to produce a blow-by. And he tried everything he could and nothing, he could not persuade management to overturn his, his, his uh, expertise on this matter. Um, the, the second hero in this, in this story is the, the uh, Richard Feynman, the 1965 Nobel Prize winner in uh, uh, for physics, and one of the and probably the smartest Amer American-born genius that ever lived. Okay, uh, is uh, he's he's not only the he's he's put on the Rogers Commission to uh, ex uh, investigate the Challenger disaster. And this is uh, one of the. Uh, this is a uh, video, a, 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 an, an enactment of the story by National Geographic called Challenger Down Told Story. It's on YouTube. It's got ten parts to it. It's the eighth part of it. And that's Richard Feynman, as you can see, they're holding up the O-ring in a uh, vice. Okay, and he discovered the cause of the problem. Well, the Rogers Commission. We should give you a background here. Roger Commission was. It was uh, his per whole purpose of the Rogers Commission, which was uh, appointed by Ronald Reagan, uh, was to whitewash the uh, the whole uh, Challenger disaster. And because he didn't do a good job in finding out the real the root cause of the problem, it would take uh, Richard Feynman to do that. He would not sign the uh, report without having an appendix. Uh, to the uh, commissioner's report, uh, because of the whitewash of the Ro uh, Rogers Commission, it would lead to the 2003 Columbia disaster. Same thing, stupidity, uh, not not dotting the i's and crossing the t's, taking shortcuts. Um, anyway, he's holding up the O-ring, the the, uh, the rubber seal, and he's saying it does not. In cold, he has an ice water there. He just took it out of the ice water. And uh, it shows that in extremely cold temperature, the O-ring does not go back to its original, does not, it, dist it, uh, it remains in a distorted state. And it could let, let hot gases go by and not seat properly. That, that's supposed to prevent the hot gases coming out of the, uh, the, the uh, rocket. And that was the cause of the disaster. And that, you can watch this whole thing on uh, YouTube. This is a um, biography of Richard Feynman. Uh, and um, The Best Mind Since Einstein. It was made by Nova, PBS Nova, in 1993. And it's also on YouTube, The Best Mind Since Einstein. And that's one of two biographies on him. There's, there's lots of biographies on him, actually. This is another one by B, the BBC, Richard Feynman, No Ordinary Genius. And that's also on YouTube. It's a, uh, about an hour video, I guess. An hour and 35 minute video. Uh, he's got two biographies, at least two biographies written about him. One is uh, Genius by... Uh, New York Times reporter Glick, I forgot his first name, and the other one is No Ordinary Genius. Now, to understand how much of a genius he is, uh, he helped develop, he's one of, two, helped develop the atomic bomb, and he's one of only two people, I think, that could have made the atomic bomb by themselves. The other one was the Nobel Prize winner, Enrico Fermi. They're both good at experiments and, and very good at theory, and uh, so anyway, this is that's uh, something I highly recommend you guys looking at. This is a stamp that came out for Richard Feynman. 
Those are Feynman diagrams that you see there. Those very famous diagrams um, that he invented. And he's now Richard Feynman is also the father of nanotechnology, and also he's the father of parallel computers. And I'll let you look into that. He helped uh, so he helped develop the, what the connection machine in, at Caltech with parallel processing. So he's, he's considered so a parallel computer has sometimes been called a Feynman machine. Um, anyway, in 1959, as you can see there. He, wrote, he gave a lecture, Plenty Room at the Bottom, and he's the father of nanotechnology. He's, in, that, in, in this, uh, in this uh, lecture that he gave, he says that all the information at the uh, Library of Congress, all the film ever made, all the books ever written, can be put on a credit card size object. Plenty of room left over, probably. Uh, and this spurred nanotechnology, which is your cell phone and your laptops, for uh, the integrated circuits to be built. Um, so he's he helped, he also would give uh, small little awards to science, to engineers at Caltech to build small uh, robots or sm small objects. And uh, so it's very interesting that he did that. Now this is Richard Feynman's on Google. He's got over 1,654,000 results on Dresden Feynman. He lives on anecdotes. So he's uh, quite a... Uh, it's one, of the, one of the stories about him is... Um, when he was working for, working on the atomic bomb at the end of the war, he got bored and he asked the general if he could um, break into the safe, keeping all the atomic secrets. And the general said, "Look, uh, Richard, this these the safe is the safest safe is the heart is the it's impossible to crack this safe. It's the safest safe in the world. But if you want to try, go ahead." So Richard Feynman already worked it out. And he figured out how the tumblers work, and he broke into the safe. And when the general found out he broke into the safe, he had him arrested. But since he's he already gave him permission, he of course let him out of the brig. <laughs> so that's a, one of the funnier anecdotes of Richard Feynman. Um, he's written several books. Surely you're joking, Mr. Feynman. Is that that anecdote is probably in that book? Um, he's also uh, one of the greatest teachers of physics that ever lived. He's one of the greatest teachers that ever lived. Uh, he uh, wrote the Feynman lectures when he was for for freshmen uh, at Caltech, and you can still buy it on on on, on um, Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Uh, it's three it's three book high, big volumes, uh, quarto volumes, large books uh, of his lectures, and he's. That's probably the definitive introduction to physics ever written. He's probably the great, one of the greatest teachers that ever lived. Uh, one of his hobbies was uh, taking on mathematicians and Nobel Prize winners. And uh, one of uh, he would get them into a quandary, and you know they get all flustered about it. He was very good at uh, uh, defeating uh, these mathematicians and Nobel Prize winners. One of them, one of his targets was Murray Gell-Mann, who was another Nobel Prize winner at Caltech. And Murray Gell-Mann was so flustered that he actually accused Richard Feynman of having bad breath. <laughs> uh, of course, that's an ad hominem attack. It's an attack on his person. It's not really a logical argument. But I thought that was very funny. Uh, anyway, he's because the, to summarize very quickly, because the um, um, Rogers Commission did not properly try to whitewash the whole thing, it would lead to the Columbia disaster in 2003, and hopefully we can learn something about science. This you know, and from Richard Feynman. Thank you.